Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization VI. Today we're going to be playing as Macedon, Alexander, DD difficulty, Ancient Era start, standard settings, and we're just going to go ahead and jump in and get going. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I know I've been watching my stats. More of you people have been clicking that subscribe button, but it has still been around 80% of people not subscribed. It really does help out the channel, and I know it's annoying to have to ask, but look, this is the way the game works, so we're going to do it. Okay, this is a very interesting start location. We have some very interesting tiles. Most notably, what I'm seeing here is actually a move to the Furs might be a really good move here. And the reason why I'm considering a move to the Furs is because when, if I move to the Furs, not only will I get access to these Furs to sell to the AI when I meet them, I'm going to be adjacent to three tiles that have two food, two production, which are kind of like the best tiles you can hope for in the early game. So with that said, I think we will move to the furs and begin explorating the world around us. Right, time to settle on the furs, found the city. We will remove the woods, but we do get to keep that plus one food here and the plus one gold, which is very nice. And you can see if we go up to the resource tab, we do in fact have access to furs. I am kind of trying to think about what our opening strategy here is. There's kind of two ways to think about this. I could either rush for bronze working and get the encampment and the barracks up to start pumping out units, or I could go for a couple of early settles, get myself a campus and then go for the encampment. I might go for like a couple of early scouts, get one to two settlers and then look for somebody to kill. So that's kind of like the working plan. So I'll start off with some scouts. And the reason we're going for some scouts is because we want to reveal more about the world around us. And that's also why we're picking up animal husbandry to get access to horses, because that will allow us to build the heteroi. Speaking of the heteroi, I didn't stop to talk about Alexander's bonuses. So let's start off with to the world's end. Cities do not incur war weariness, which means we can be at war with everyone for as long as we like, and we won't get any war weariness penalties, which is a huge advantage. Not only that, but all of our military units heal completely when we capture a city with a world wonder, which is a great way to sustain momentum when we're going to war with somebody who maybe should have built some military but spent all their time building wonders instead. Hellenistic fusion is also great because it gives us a eureka for each encampment or campus in the conquered city and an inspiration for each holy site in theater square which is a great way to sustain research even if we're not actually having a really high culture or science. The Heterioi is a Macedonian unique heavy cavalry unit and that's important because I believe it does actually upgrade to the knight which allows us to transition to knights quite easily with an early game horseman push. They also get plus five combat strength when they're near a great general so we are going to want to get an early encampment and early great generals and as well they give me plus five great general points when they kill an enemy unit and they start with a free promotion. Very very powerful unit. We'll look at those in more detail when we actually unlock them. We also have the high pass fist which is a Macedonian un unique melee unit that replaces the swordsman has plus five combat strength when besieging districts and an additional 50% support bonus. The support bonus is the combat strength bonus you get from being adjacent to allied units on the defense. So normally if you're standing beside one allied unit you'll get plus two combat strength. The high pass pist gets plus two. We also have the Basilicoia Paides, Paides, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a unique building that gives us 25% combat experience for all melee ranged and heteroi, these guys trained in the city, as well as 25% of the science of the production cost when producing a non-civilian unit in the city. And then you get the standard sort of strategic resource stuff. So it's a very nice uh, building for not having to actually build a strong research game and still be able to sustain yourself in terms of science. Very much so with civilization geared towards domination, and so we'll be trying to do that. We did meet Buenos Aires, which is brilliant, because that means we could go for an early monument and get the plus two production towards that. It's also going to contribute towards any encampments that we build in our capital. First scout completed, and we did in fact find a tribal village. Now, I'm kind of in the middle of all of the jungle slash rainforest tiles, which kind of tells me I'm in the very middle of the map, especially if I try to rotate the camera. You can see the top of the map is all the way up there. And if I rotate the camera all the way around this way, I can't even see the, I can just barely see the bottom of the map up here in the top right hand corner. If you want to know how to rotate your camera, hold down alt left click and you can rotate your camera to kind of have a look around. It's kind of fun to do this, like if you turn off all the, the yield icons and the grid and stuff like that, you can kind of have a proper look at it. And if you install the Secretact Simple UI mod, you can also get rid of the entire UI and really get a good look at your empire. 
Link to that mod will be in the description. So we have a little bit of a conundrum here. I could go for the very early monument here, which I really like the idea of, especially since we have Buenos Aires, bringing that down to only six turns. Um, this would allow me to get a lot of early culture. I really like that idea. I could go for another scout. I tell you what, I might go like scout monument settler because getting the extra early scout can be a huge advantage in terms of meeting city state. So I think I will commit to that. Okay, so there is a barbarian encampment over here, thankfully. There is also another city state here too. And we did get plus one envoy. So since we were not the first pe person to meet Babylon, that means I know there's a player somewhere down to the south, west, or east in this sort of an area, because I can kind of just maybe see some coastline here. But since we picked up that extra envoy from that uh, tribal village, I am going to go ahead and pop that into Babylon to get that plus two science up to a healthy plus five science per turn. And I'm going to see if I can bring this warrior over. I might try to clear this with my scout. It kind of all depends on what uh, Babylon actually does. Oh, lovely. Another scout. I'm going to take a hit on him. Try and push him away. And um, we just picked up animal husbandry. And it looks like we did indeed find some horses over here. So I think I'm going to rush to settle this to pick up those horses. And you know what? If I were to settle here, I could go for the pyramids in the city as well. And this isn't a terrible city to try and get the pyramids in, I feel. Okay, so animal husbandry is done. I need to make the decision between going for bronze working or for riding. And this feels a little bit more like a riding game, this game. So I'm going to head for riding. Another barbarian encampment has appeared over here. So I'm going to redirect here and hope that maybe I can get this clear and I'll send my scout down to the southwest. Beautiful. Okay, so Hattus, or Babylon actually failed to kill this barbarian. So I'm actually going to get the kill with my scout and steal the encampment and get the gold and the culture boost and like all those advantages. So it looks like there's another player here. It looks like it, I, I can't tell who that might be Brazil maybe. I can't tell yet. There is code of laws. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in discipline so that I can kill barbarian encampments a little bit easier. And I might plug in God King for a Pantheon here because I don't plan to get any faith income. So I'll plug in God King here just so I can get an early Pantheon. Oh, and we found Mount Everest as well. Very cool. And Nagazagarmu. And we were the first to find Nagazagarmu, which is actually a really big advantage because that's going to help us when we're producing our settlers. And I'll explain that in a moment. Just unlocked pottery. Doesn't have huge consequences for us right now, but we are about to unlock riding. And thankfully, we should be able to meet an AI this turn. And it is Brazil indeed. I did manage to correctly identify his border color. He has a pretty well defended city here. I'm going to immediately make a deal with him and sell him my furs. You can see he's already on three cities. They can't ever trade you their capital. So you'll only ever see uh, the number of cities they have minus one in this list. And I'll go ahead and trade him my furs for five gold per turn, which is over the course of 30 turns, about 150 gold. I'm going to fortify here for a turn to let this guy heal up and let the, well, actually, I might attack just once here. Now I'm going to attack just once here and then let this guy hit him a couple times before I try to clear that out myself. Okay, perfect. They hit him. I'll heal for a turn and let him hit them again. Keep scouting with this. Looks like there's some very open land down here that's unclaimed, which is handy. I could declare war and steal this builder, but I want to be a little bit careful about how early I declare war. And it looks like they're actually building the Great Bath, so this will be a perfect civilization to attack early. Reason being is, as Alexander, you do want to kill people who build wonders. Oh, excellent. So the scout attacked me. I get to clear the barb camp, get the 30 gold. I have about 183 gold, which does mean I'm very close to being able to purchase a builder or perhaps a trader when I get foreign trade. Now I'm at three of six population and I'm working my three best tiles, which are two, two, uh, two, two tiles. I could pick up these other two, two tiles. So I feel like a five to six population city here is relatively efficient. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up uh, a settler right now so that I can forward settle Brazil a little bit, just so I have an easier time kind of maybe navigating troops up and around through here to get access to them. And then I'll come back and backfill this in a little while. Continuing to scout around. Haven't found a whole lot of tribal villages, which is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping for a couple more because I feel like I got some good scouting off so far. And indeed, Brazil did manage to build the Great Bath, which is excellent because I'm going to be taking that off him later on. Let's attack this scout to get a heal on this guy. Well, he'll get the promotion, which will allow him to heal. And uh, I wanted to talk about Ngezigarmu or the militaristic city-state. You can see here, I'm getting plus two envoy 
in the capital when producing units and indeed you can see here if i hover over that you'll see the plus two towards units in the bottom right there that means that production from this militaristic city state is in fact applying to settlers that's why militaristic city states are really great to meet early because it allows you to produce settlers more efficiently in your capital. Like if you really think about it, it's it's like I'm working another one of these two food, two production tiles, except I'm not getting the food, right? I'm getting the production value of that. So this is this is a little bit of a difficult thing um, for people to grasp their head around. Um, if we talk about the promotions that are best for a warrior, and, and I often, I don't talk about this kind of thing very much. I kind of gloss over this and make this decision without ever explaining it. So typically the best promotion to take on your warrior is the battle cry promotion because this gives you plus seven combat strength against melee and ranged units and because it has no qualifying statements like tortoise over here which says combat strength when defending against ranged attacks this mean this means that it applies when you're being attacked and when you are attacking so this provides the most overall survivability in terms of attacking and dealing damage and taking damage against ranged units there is hatusa brilliant and we'll go ahead and continue to... Oh, we did, in fact, find another tribal village. Beautiful. There's 20 horses. And I'm kind of tempted to sell those 20 horses. Although, if I sell them... Now, we did not meet Hattusa first, which is fine. We will be able to get an envoy with them, I'm hoping. They want me to build a government plaza, so we will be able to get an envoy with them. Get that plus two science in my capital, which is perfect. Honor to meet you, exchanging information on our capital. So Nubia is all the way over here. So that's definitely someone I want to take on. And we did, in fact, unlock the campus technology. Now, we don't have anywhere that we can actually build the campus yet until we get mining, which will allow us to chop the copper here. Now, normally I would maybe want to keep the copper, but it's kind of expensive for me to get, you know, anywhere else. So this copper tile is probably going to be the best place. And I have to make a decision. Do I want to get the builder? Or do I want to wait and get the trader here? What I might do, actually, is get the builder and be ready to harvest this just to get that little bit of extra gold out of the copper and then use that extra gold to buy the trader. So I think that's a good move. That way I'm getting maximal use out of this tile. We found another tribal village. Unfortunately, we're not in a position to uh, clear this one out. Maybe if they don't fully kill it, we can steal it. Yeah, here's another one that I might be able to clear. We'll see if we can pull this off. If they attack, I should be able to steal that. Uh, not quite. Let's heal for a turn and see if we can steal this kill. Hoping I can steal a couple of those barbarian encampments because they're great. We also bumped into Brussels here. We were not the first to meet them, but we also found Lisbon. So there's a lot of city-states in this game that we should be able to make friends with and send envoys to. So Buenos Aires wants an archer. So I'm more concerned about people I don't yet have envoys in. They want me to build a holy site. That's unlikely. The government plaza will happen. And the inspiration for mysticism is basically found a pantheon, which I am getting the faith per turn to do. So we'll definitely be able to look after picking up Brussels, which will give us another plus two production towards all infrastructure buildings. Beautiful. Okay, so Brussels attacked this barbarian spearman, and now we can swoop in and steal the kill. Oh no, that is actually horrific. So we actually rolled low on our damage roll and did not get that kill. That's incredibly disappointing. So we unlocked foreign trade, I think. Hmm. Let's see, do I want to go for early empire? I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up craftsmanship here. Oh, nice one. This warrior actually left and did not clear out this camp. So we will still get the kill. As for up here, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to get this one, but I'm really hoping because it's, it's a lot of early game gold. If you can snipe these barbarian encampments, it's, it's what is allowing me to purchase this builder and then potentially a trader shortly thereafter. First settler completed. And because we're playing single player, it's much safer to kind of walk your units out and about without being escorted. So we do have uh, a turn of production to waste. I think I would like to get that campus up. Uh, I'm tempted to get another scout because really information is very important in the early game. And it looks like there's a lot of open terrain here that I'm going to have to wander around and find important stuff about. There is mining, giving us the ability to build mines as well as harvest copper. We're going to get 58 gold for this harvest, which will almost pay for the trader here. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to snipe this barbarian encampment. Not a big deal. We'll continue to explore. So I think I'd like to pick up bronze working now. 
and I definitely want to build a campus here. That's a plus three campus right there. That's a highly valuable place. I'm going to place that to lock in its price, but we'll finish that scout. Now, in terms of making decisions about what to do with this builder, I think my goal is to get this quarry here, even though this is very useful as potentially a um, campus later on. I think getting the quarry will give me the boost towards masonry, which does eventually lead um to some of the higher tech units down here. So that's an extra little bit of science. And I'm also gonna stop off here to pick up irrigation so that I can improve this cotton to sell as well. So I'm kind of thinking economically in terms of how I'm navigating my way through the tech tree. Just doing a little bit of light exploration and fog busting in the local area. Pop up there and we'll settle right on the border with Brazil. Is that a holy, oh, it looks like there's a holy, um, a uh, religious city state up there, which is good news. Cause if I can get an envoy with them, uh, I'll have a little bit of faith income. There we go. We settled Methane. Now, this city doesn't have very good tiles to work, unfortunately, but it does have access to at least this cotton tile, which will give me a little bit more gold. And now I can justify picking up the trader in here. And I think I'm going to trade with Brazil because none of the city states that I can see want a trade route, uh, with the exception of Babylon. But I already have an envoy with Babylon, and I don't think getting suzerainty of them is a big deal for me right here. We'll, we'll consider that. Now, in Methane, there's sort of two ways I can go about things here in Methane. Well, there's actually quite a few. It's, a, it's actually a very interesting sort of set of decisions that I have available to me. So, for example, I could go for the monument. And what the monument will do is it will get me up towards political philosophy and some of these important cards like military training that allow me to build encampments faster. Uh, so that's a really good investment. I could also go for a granary here to help the city continue to grow and capture tiles and actually work these useful tiles because this city does actually have pretty good tiles to work. So I feel like if your city doesn't have good tiles to work in the first ring, I feel like you should go for monument. If your city does have okay tiles, which would be anything that has three yield, ideally four yield, then it would be okay to go for a granary to maximize the number of those tiles you can work. And if your city has really bad tiles, then you should go for a builder to try to improve them. On the other hand, I could go ahead and pick up a slinger for the purpose of up, once we have craftsmanship, we'll plug in a gage and then use the sort of archer boost there to pick up an envoy with one of the city states that we can get here, uh, Buenos Aires. We could get another envoy there. If we really want that envoy, we could do that. But I think because this city has such good available tiles to work, in this particular instance, I feel like a builder would be really well placed to get extra production in here, which would allow me to actually build an encampment right on the border with um, Brazil and sort of provide a little bit of offensive infrastructure for taking them on. So I'm going to go for builder and then ideally an encampment. All right, little scout doing their work. Don't see any major barbarian encampments or anything like that in the nearby area. And uh, we're just doing a little bit of fog busting and exploration. There's actually a ton of land down here. If I was going for like a super wide non-domination game, this would be the perfect kind of setup for it. So question is, do I want to trade with Brazil and get the plus one science? Or do I want to trade with Babylon and get the plus one envoy? Man, envoys are incredibly valuable. And I probably won't be going to war with Brazil for a little bit of time. So I might go ahead and pick up that envoy there. And that'll also give us the boost for currency, which is just another way to get a little bit of science without actually having to like build anything science related. Let's go ahead and improve the quarry here, boost for masonry. And then we'll send this guy over here to build a plantation. We found candy. We were not the first to meet candy. They want me to build a holy site. There's actually two city states that want me to build a holy site right now, I believe. Yeah, it's Lisbon and candy. So I could choose to invest into a holy site to pick up the extra plus two faith and plus four gold per turn. It seems like a pretty big investment um, for a game where I don't want to really care too much about a religion. It might be something we look into. Continuing to explore. Okay, that's a little bit scary. I'm going to try and run away from those horsemen. I'm not sure where they came from or where they're heading to. I really hope they're not heading towards me. That would be uh, a little bit perturbing. I'm going to go ahead and send my warrior in defensive posture, maybe. Oh, we bumped into Cahokia and we unlocked craftsmanship. Let's go ahead and plug in. Uh, I'm going to keep discipline here for just a little while because I'm not building any military unit. I could also choose to plug in Ilkum. I'm going to keep God King for now. Now, Cahokia, I was not the first to meet Cahokia and they want me to build a government plaza. So I think a government plaza is definitely on the cards for me here. It's going to be something that I grab ASAP. 
I want that government plaza for the um, for the two envoys that are sitting out there. I believe it was uh, Hattusa, which would be plus two science, and Cahokia, which would be plus four gold to get that government plaza, which seems a little bit more valuable, especially since I want a government plaza anyway this game. My army is very light at the moment, so I do want to be careful about uh, how I navigate and watch out for Brazil because they, they, could, they could very easily kill me here if I wasn't prepared. So with that said, I'm going to bring my warrior over to defend Methane just to keep, you know, sort of abreast of any potential military issues that might come my way. This is an incredible Petra city, actually. Good God. Um, too bad there's not really the production around to build the Petra. We finished the campus, getting us a little bit of era score. The era does end in turn 10 turns, so I will need to figure out how to get a little bit more era score. I might skip a library this game. So I'm definitely going to skip the library and I might go ahead and pick up another settler. It could also be worth my while to pick up a warrior or a slinger. Um, mm, it's a hard choice. Hard choice. So you're in position to improve that. A granary could also be worth it to work more of these two food, two production tiles. I need to also think about where my government plaza is going. And I think my government plaza might actually go here. Because that would provide adjacency to both of this and potentially any other district that I were to place here if I were to do that. Hmm. Hard choices. And then I would want to get this city to seven population to build an encampment. I think that's what we might do. This sort of a configuration is fine, which means I would want to get a granary so that I can continue to grow this city. Although that doesn't really make sense until I have a, to pop out another settler or two, right? It doesn't. I don't think it does. Hard choices, hard choices. Well, I, I definitely want a granary in here because this is going to be a big sort of culture and science center and not so much encampment-y stuff. So I'm going to grab myself another settler. I definitely want to have the horse, um, horse income. And then after I have irrigation, I think I'm going to pick up bronze working so that I can reveal iron. That'll be sort of like the plan. There's irrigation, unlocking plantations, more importantly, allowing me to build on this cotton, getting me a little bit more gold per turn, which will in turn allow me to trade with the AI. And usually what I'll do is I'll ask them to pay for something. So one gold and 120 gold uh, straight up. And then I'll see what these guys will buy it for. They'll buy it for four gold per turn. So I think I'm actually getting a better deal from Brazil right now because the four gold per turn from nubia is equal to 120 turn 120 gold over 30 turns whereas i'm getting about 150 gold from brazil for this one so i'll sell that to him you know what else i'm going to do uh i'll be trading the mutual open borders once i have early empire right let's go oh looks like we managed to find egypt now actually Looking at this land over here, this is like the perfect land for an Egypt game, even if it is a little bit flat. I, I think I might try to avoid settling too much in terms of cities down here. There's definitely a city around here because there's really good productive tiles, but down around here, I don't know, maybe to get access to the Jade and any other strategics over here. This feels like a very, very flat area. There could be a city near this volcano and this copper. I definitely feel like there's a city around here because that would capture a lot of these really good productive tiles. So I'll kind of just tentatively place a city center pin. And I think there's also a similar argument to be made around here. Um, the sort of tentatively placing a pin right there on this tile because that'll give me access to a strategic and a luxury and some 2-2 tiles as well. I am covering up a 2-2 tile, but I think that's worth it because this positioning offers a lot of opportunities for me. And then maybe a city down here, like this 1-3 tile, there's like decent food and horses and all that stuff. So I think there might be another city down here, kind of trying to identify high value settlements that won't take a very long time to come online. There's also two luxuries up here. So there's potentially a city somewhere in this area. I'm just kind of like, I'm not completely sold on the exact location of these cities. But because I'm going for a domination game, I want to settle my cities a little bit further apart um, to claim as much land as possible, especially since the land looks very unoccupied right now. So normally I would settle my cities much closer together. But because I want to go to war relatively early, I don't want to be spending my entire early game building settlers. So I'm trying to like plan out where can I pop down cities and just get the best of a piece of land. 
Like, if I was trying to settle optimally for, like, a SimCity game where I didn't invade anyone, I would maybe settle here, I would settle really close, I would settle, like, two cities along this river, I would try to cram two cities in here, use aqueducts to get fresh water, I would put, like, three cities in this area, but I'm kind of just plopping down cities to kind of grab bits of land. Man, I wish I was Susan a candy there, I would have actually grabbed a relic, which would have been incredible. Unfortunately, I wasn't, so not much we can do about that. Continuing to explore feel like we have a good idea where at least three of the five people we have to kill. So there's a probability that there's another player up here or another two players out to the left. She already has chariot archers out, which is a worry. Um, we are going to be behind in terms of science and culture for quite a while this game. And so that's a big that's a big part of a domination game is, is figuring out when you actually have a window of power to actually attack an enemy civilization. So that's why we're going to be going for Pingala early to build up our science and culture. Cause uh, our first target is of course Brazil. And they have better science and culture than us, which means we're gonna be behind in terms of army tech. So we need to catch up a little bit. No amount of pumping units into an army at this stage of the game will actually be able to break them. Just because we're playing on Didi, they get all these combat bonuses and their cities are, you know, uh, in very defensible locations through very difficult terrain. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to like maybe skip a little bit of the early game units. I will still build them for error score. In fact, I'm a little bit sad that I can't get my hands on another one point of error score. I'm trying to think about what I could do to pick up that one error score. Maybe if I could find another natural wonder, that would be really, really helpful. Well, there is bronze working and we did actually find iron in the capital. I'm gonna wanna get that improved as soon as possible. Uh, I have access to a builder as a potential purchase. So I might actually buy a builder in Methane, use him to improve two mine tiles, and then come over here and improve this mine tile as well. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. I kind of like that idea a lot. That would make this city far better in terms of productivity. So now that we have bronze working, I kind of want to head up towards horseback riding. So we're going to go ahead and pick up archery as well. And we did in fact get our Pantheon, which is fantastic. And it looks like the Settler Pantheon is gone. But alternatively, God of Craftsmen is pretty good here. We have quite a few strategic resource tiles already available to us. Not a huge amount, but there's like a decent few around. And this feels like it's very well situated for a domination game. Alternatively... We could go for City Patron Goddess, but I don't think we're going to be able to get a very early war just due to the fact that they have so much culture and, and science right now. I could also go for the Free Builder, which isn't terrible. It's like an injection of production into my empire, which would allow me to get this really early. Um, I'm going to go for God of Craftsman here for the long-term benefit because it'll just make these tiles so much better. Looks like another barbarian encampment appeared down here by Babylon. I'm going to situate my scout near here to see if I can snipe this one as well. Pop a mine into Methane, giving this city plus one production, making it a little bit more productive, and then we'll pop another mine in right there. Might even do some jungle lumber mills here. I think that would be a, a long-term plan. State workforce is unlocked, which is beautiful. We can also pull out God King now. It's not as important. I think I'm going to plug in urban planning for the plus one production. I'll keep discipline here for now it seems like a pretty reasonable move i also um i want to build that encampment so i'm going to buy this tile so that i have the encampment and this also will prevent them from building an encampment here so i'll just place that encampment for now that'll be sort of something we work on very very soon i'm a little bit worried about not getting a classical or medieval i really really want a classical era great general so i'm going to be working on that as soon as possible we got state workforce. Let's go ahead and pick up early empire. And with that governor title, we're going to go ahead and appoint Pingala into the capital. And we're going to be basically using Pingala to catch up in terms of science and culture. Another tribal village. Beautiful. That was the boost for sailing. Not exactly the ideal. Um, where do I want to settle? I could settle for more iron. I definitely would like to have access to horses. That feels like an important thing to pick up. Um, I think I want to go for the government plaza here get the extra governor title on Pingala. So we'll pop that down and delete that pin. Not a perfect government plaza by any stretch of the imagination, but it's only gonna take, take us three turns to get it. Okay, there's archery unlocked and we found another barb cap over here. Hopefully Brazil deals with that one. We're in a golden age 
Uh, let's see, I could go for pen brush and voice. I don't have commercial hubs. I have very little faith. I could pick up Exodus of the Evangelists to get a religion in 15 turns. Which is technically faster than all of these guys. Who else got a golden age? Egypt and Brazil, as far as I can tell. Um, man, this is a tough one. Because I don't have the faith income to really justify monumentality. And the big problem is we're going to be in the Dark Age next era, most likely. The problem is, even if I get this religion... See, I don't really want a religion, because having a religion during a domination game makes loyalty even more difficult to deal with. I might just go ahead and take pen, brush, and voice for the little bit of extra culture from each specialty district. It's a plus one culture, um, as it stands right now. Like, if I tap this, you'll see I'm up to 5.7, because I'm getting plus one from district. So, like, plus one culture per turn, that'll potentially grow to two and three once I get this encampment in here. That seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. I'm also going to lock in the productive tiles here and then send this builder off to improve that. And then this builder will come out and potentially improve that furs there to be able to sell that to other AIs. Speaking of my furs, has this deal run out? No, I still have those horses. I don't want to sell them. I want to try to keep the AI away from strategic resources if possible. And um, we'll get our way towards horseback riding. But yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, Egypt isn't a big fan of me as it stands. Neither is Brazil right now, but that's fine. I don't need them to be fans of me um, as much as I need you guys to be fans of me. <laughs> so we got another governor title. We're going to go ahead and plug that into Pingala. I'm going to pick up Connoisseur first because I, I have a pretty strong science game so far. So ideally, I'll get that first. And we'll soon be able to plug in early empire. So you'll see just how much culture and science we have. Like if you look how far behind we are right now, That'll get significantly better once we have Pingala established in our capital city. The Governor Plaza is completed in here. I think I would like to um, pick up a settler here. I could go for the granary to allow the city to continue to grow. I could get a builder in here to send this off to improve the horses and stuff over here. Um, I have a builder here. That builder will take quite a while to get over there. So really, I think while I'm waiting for early empire to get the 50% production towards settlers, I might build a builder. The granary is a good move because the more population I have in my capital, the more um, the more science and culture I'll get out of it thanks to Pingala. Man, it's a, it's a tough it's a tough set of choices that we have available to us here. I think I will go for the builder. I think the builder is the right choice because that's going to let me get these tiles over here working away for me. Now, in, in Methodate, we want to go immediately for the encampment. I would like to get the monument in here, but I need to start producing uh, encampment units. Like, I need to start just getting this up and running to get my unique building for the era score. I'd really like to avoid a, a Dark Age next era. So, having that would be swell there is early empire giving us another government plan uh, government title i'm going to go ahead and plug in researcher into pingala and now that pingala is established in my capital you'll see i'll go from this third uh, 15 to 13 science per turn up to 20 and 13 which is a much more respectable compared to the ai still not perfect but we're a little bit more competitive and we're settling our third city already and we already have a decent amount of infrastructure in place ai guy i don't know how to pronounce the city but we do in fact have horses which is perfect. We will be getting those improved in the not too distant future. I think I want to get this iron online first and then I'll send this builder out to help. And I'm going to switch away from horseback riding just for a little while because I'm about to get that boost. And we'll just quickly pick up uh, masonry, which will allow us to harvest stone if we ever run into a situation where we do want to do that. Next up, we're going to be picking up political philosophy. I want to get my tier two government online. And over here in iGuy, uh, let's see. The city has uh, relatively good tiles to work. Would benefit probably from a granary, letting it grow to actually work these tiles. Because it, it has decent tiles to work, right? Two twos, two ones, and then two potentially improved tiles here. So I feel like the granary is going to be the big thing in here to let it actually grow and work these tiles. And lest we forget, I'm going to be switching out urban planning to plug in colonization. And we'll be getting another couple of settlers I think in the early game until we feel ready that we can actually go to war with Brazil. I'm going to talk to Cleopatra now that we have early empire. I'm basically going to go around to every civilization in the game and kind of panhandle for open borders. So we're going to trade her furs. I'm going to get six gold per turn. Actually, let me go ahead and make sure I'm getting a good deal for those furs. So Brazil is too broke to really make a deal. 
she would pay five gold per turn. Egypt would pay seven gold per turn. So I'll do the seven gold per turn and knock a little bit off that for open borders. And that'll be good. Let's also talk to Pedro. How much would you pay me for open borders? So he'll give me a tiny bit of gold for open borders. And Nubia might do the same thing. I typically only do this if I'm going to get a small advantage out of it, like a tiny bit of gold, which will mean that we can purchase more stuff. Alrighty, so there is the furs. Now, loyalty is a small problem in here. Not a huge problem, but a very, very small problem. And I definitely feel like the furs are more important. So I have a bit of a conundrum here. Um, this is flatland furs. I could harvest here for 36 production to get my encampment a little bit sooner. Or I could improve this with the camp to get a little bit more gold. Uh, so I could harvest and improve, or I could just improve. I think the one gold per turn from working this, or sorry, the one production per turn from working this is actually a pretty big advantage here, specifically because the city just doesn't have a whole lot of early game production. The other nice thing about this is it'll give the city plus one housing, so I'm not like beholden to getting a granary. And the extra plus one food too means the city is going to grow just a scooch faster. Hold on, is that plus one food coming from anything? No, I don't have any mods installed. Okay, good, good, good. I only have a UI mod installed, which is perfect. So now I have two build charges on this builder. And since we already have bronze working, which allows us to harvest uh, these rainforest tiles, I'm kind of tempted to get this builder over here and maybe harvest a couple of these um, jungle tiles to improve them. I definitely want to harvest this forest here because I can knock one production off it and essentially trade. Like if we look at the production cost of a builder, it's 62 production, right? A forest is worth 36 production. So that's about half the production of a builder. So I can trade two builder charges to get the same tile plus a bit of production. And considering the amount of production I get from chopping is more than half the value of a builder. It seems like a pretty good way to sort of turn my production into more production and still have a good tile at the end. So it's kind of a way to accelerate a little bit, but mm, might be better only to do that with Magnus. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm kind of considering that as it stands. But the nice thing about open borders with Egypt means we can actually get a good look at her territory and plan a potential war down the road much easier. Brilliant. We're going to go ahead and improve the um, ironworking tile. We got a ton of boosts there. The wheel, ironworking and apprenticeship all from a single tile improvement as well as now we have a really powerful tile to work here. Now the other thing, the other thing I could do with this builder is to harvest out both of these jungle tiles um, and then just buy slightly like better tiles like this tile here for the city to work because these two one tiles they're not amazing and I won't be able to improve them for a very long time so by harvesting them out I could force the city to grow very quickly and also finish my encampment quicker. I might actually do that with this builder, but I might wait until I have Magnus to do that. So this, I'm gonna have to find something to do with this builder until that till that time comes. This builder is definitely heading out here to improve these horses and this cotton that I wanna sell. I'm definitely feeling very exposed because my military is very light right now, but I think things are gonna work out just fine. And I definitely want settlers in my capital. So I wanna unlock Hypaspist right now. Um, because I have the iron income to actually pay for this. I have 251 gold in the bank. So hmm, what could I do with that 250 gold? I could if I wanted. To, I don't know if buying a granary is the right move in the capital. Because we are producing settlers out of there. Which is going to constantly knock the population down a little bit. But for example I could buy a monument in Methane. Which would allow it to grow its borders slightly faster. Or I could buy it over here in Aigai. Or I could save my money for like another builder. Maybe when I settle this city, which one do I want to settle first? I could settle this city all the way down here and quickly churn out a builder and do things. I know, I'm not sure what I want to do with my gold right now. I'm going to hold on to it while I think. So Egypt definitely spawned a little bit isolated. There's political philosophy. Perfect. And I think I want to go for... I want to be in oligarchy when I'm actually at war, but I feel like autocracy is pretty good here, mostly for the plus one to all yields for each government building. However, Classical Republic does have the potential three economic policy cards if I want to plug in like urban planning, income, and colonization. Whereas with autocracy, I can only plug in two of those. I'm going to be using my... Yeah, I think, I think it's better to go for autocracy here because the diplomatic policy card doesn't really matter to me. Whereas the plus one to all yields for each government building 
because I have the uh, plaza here, that's plus one food, production, gold, science, culture, and faith in my capital, which seems pretty valuable, especially since now that I have political philosophy, I'll be able to build the uh, tier two government plaza buildings and get another plus one to everything. So I feel like this just has like really good early game power, even if it has kind of two quote unquote useless military policy cards, uh, they're still not bad. And this is actually a really good government because we can we can have urban planning and colonization, which means we're helping all of our cities and producing settlers faster. And we can also retool this by moving urban planning here, moving colonization out, and then plugging in a bunch of military policy cards that'll allow us to like produce and sustain a massive army. Like we could do this kind of a thing. So we have loyalty production. So I kind of like this configuration a lot. I'll put in the settler card down the bottom here. And then for now, I'll plug in Discipline. Because I don't have any units that require maintenance right now. So Discipline makes sense to be able to fight off Barbarians a little bit better. So I like this government. And just to show you that, if I tap this, that should refresh all this. You can see I'm getting plus one from Modifiers. That's my government. Uh, I'm getting plus two from Modifiers in here. I forget from what. But I'm getting uh, plus four. Uh, I think the... I can't remember the Modifiers, all of them, but... Um, Modifiers are essentially like things that are applying to your government. So we're getting a lot of plus one from modifiers here to all of our yields, which just makes our capital that much better. And I am playing a very capital centric strategy right now where I'm trying to build a very, very powerful capital city that's going to build up infrastructure and help out the other cities while the other cities sort of get themselves set up to start mass producing units for war. It's kind of a, it's kind of a different way to play, but it's one that I, I think is pretty enjoyable so far. Now, also... What I would like to pick up in terms of infrastructure is I do want this military training for the raid cards and the veterancy cards. These are really, really good war cards that'll allow me to, um, to take people on and build up my infrastructure at the same time. So I can use the veterancy card before I go to war to build up my encampment district and then use the raid card while at war to sort of sustain my economy by pillaging. So that's definitely the direction I want to head. Uh, I might go ahead and pick up the envoy from mysticism first though. Because I could take... Su oh no, Pedro has suzerainty here. I could take suzerainty of um, of Nagazagarmu, which would give me some pretty nice stuff here, as well as plus two production in every city. So I think what we're going to do is we're definitely going to pick up Mysticism here for the plus one Envoy to get a hold of Nagazagarmu, which will also give me a little bit of Era score. I like that plan so far. I definitely want to be in a normal age, at the very least, for the next era. So this is where I have to make a decision. Do I want to harvest now? Or do I want to wait until I build the Warlord's Throne? Um, which will take about 12 turns. So this builder could be sitting around for about 12 turns doing nothing. Or do I want to use him, perhaps in my capital city, to maybe chop out this settler? Actually, a good idea. So I'm going to delay this settler just slightly. To get this builder over here, I'm going to harvest this forest. Get a bunch of extra production towards the settler because I'm harvesting, so the production will be multiplied due to my policy cards, and then re-improve this with a mine, which will get better once I have apprenticeship. So I, I feel like I like that idea so far. And this allows me to get a little bit closer to Warlord's Throne. Just a slightly more efficient way to do things. I do want to get the high pass pist, and I want to improve this guy. It only cost me 5 iron and 131 gold. I think that's a worthwhile expenditure to get the era score from that. And it'll also increase the combat strength of all my cities, meaning I'm a little bit safer from uh, being killed. Next up, I'm going to pick up horseback riding because I'm literally just about to build a pasture and get the boost towards it. It's a little bit more efficient navigation of the tech tree. And look at this tile. Three food, three production. This is an amazing tile for a city to pick up early into the game. And it has another 2-2 two, two tile. This city is just really, really strong. Like, if you remember, this city was on, like, 4 production for a long-ass time. This city is basically freshly settled, and it's already at 7 production. Like, a very, very powerful city, which is why we want the granary, so that we can work as many tiles as possible. All right, Scout is exploring. I'm going to go ahead and take Ranger on this guy. There's the Heteroi. We are going to want to build those. We also got Mysticism, which is going to allow me to take Sue's Ranity Oh man, she plugged an envoy in there. That is absolutely devious. They want me to train an archer, send a trade route. Still, a couple of people want me to build a holy site. I might actually do that. So I'll, I'll sw switch back here for, for a holy site, I think. 
and just throw one down, even if I'm not going to get a religion, which I don't want a religion this game. But getting those two envoys might be worth it. It is two faith and four gold per turn for a holy site. Like that seems like a pretty good deal, especially since I have a decent holy site there. And getting a holy site could potentially open me up to some mid-game stuff, like faith purchasing land units to sustain my war, because I will be killing people who have holy sites. So it's not an entirely worthless long-term play. I think that's a pretty reasonable way to go about things. I want to pick up military tradition so that I can pick up the maneuver card, and it'll also lead me towards military training. If I could research the construction technology, that would be great. So I'm going to pick up the wheel, and maybe I can purchase a water mill, and then research construction. It's kind of like... I'm trying to chain all my ideas together, uh, to, to get like the best early game possible. We're also going to improve this cotton here. Not an amazing tile to work, but it does provide me with a little bit of gold, which means I'm a little bit less reliant on commercial hubs. And the other big advantage is I can, of course, sell it to the AI. So she would pay four gold per turn for cotton. I want to just have a little bit of a look around, see who will pay what. He already has cotton. Four gold, six per turn, or, or, or four, six gold, four per turn. So she'll pay slightly more for cotton. So I'm going to sell that to Egypt. Uh, does she already have foxes? Yes. Brazil does not have furs. He would pay nine gold per turn for furs, which is a huge amount. And Amanator would pay four and six. So I'm going to sell this to Brazil. Nine gold per turn is a lot. I don't think I really need to explain that at this stage of the game. It is a lot of gold. That's why we're up to 33 gold per turn, which is a hell of a lot this early into the game. Now, I'm a little bit dubious of potential war coming my way. So this guy's going to have to um, head out this way. I might even improve this with a lumber mill because that would be a 2-3 tile fairly early into the game. So I'm going to have this builder just wait there. I could have a 2-4 tile here as well if I waited for lumber mills. Man, that's a hard choice to make. I think I'm going to harvest it just for the boosts. Like to get the settler out and the warlords thrown out a little bit sooner. Continuing to explore. Ooh, barbarian warrior down here to the south. Let's get the hell out of there. Now I think I need about 360 gold to purchase the watermill. 320. So I can get that in a couple of turns. Now that I have this builder in position, I'm going to switch away from warlord's throne back to the settler. And I'm about, I'm about uh, 80 production away. And I'm going to chop here for 45 production, which we multiply by 50%, which will finish the settler in about a turn. Perfect. So I shaved three turns off this while simultaneously building the Warlord's Throne. So I'll be able to get that all sort of slightly faster than I would otherwise have been able to. This is annoying. I'm being pillaged over here. Clearly Brazil did not handle this very well. Looks like their army is actually very, very crippled. So if I can get a couple of Heteroi and maybe Hypaspists, out of Methane, I might be able to get a very early war here. I definitely want to pick up currency because this is going to be how I sustain my army long term. And that also leads to apprenticeship, which will allow me to get more out of my mines. So that's sort of a, a very good chain there that I like. Let's go ahead and head towards military training. Although I might want to delay games and recreation a little bit for the construction tech. Yeah, I'm going to delay games and recreation just a scooch, pick up drama and poetry because I never intend to build a wonder. It kind of feels like all the city-states spawned in like a ring around me a little bit. Now, I'm I'm very worried about sending the settler unguarded. Do I have a unit in like the local area? Other than my main combat unit here, no. Um, I think unfortunate, unfortunate reality is here I have to kind of go for a high pass pist here. Even though I'm not quite ready to start producing military, I would really like to build this building first, but I need to clear this nonsense out. I guess what I could go for is an archer instead, and that would also help me clear this out. And then I can use this high pass pist to escort. Yeah, I like that plan. Okay, yeah, 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 I'll do that. I'll go ahead and improve this with a mine. So we're back to where we were in terms of productivity here. So which of these two cities do I want to settle first? This one I feel like has better potential. Um, but this one would get me another strategic and these horses pretty quick. So I feel like the strategic and luxury here have really high value, whereas this is just a good city. 
like an extra luxury means I can sell, which means my economy is better. I actually have the 320 gold now that I can purchase the water mill in my capital, which will give me the boost towards construction, which will allow me to build my lumber mill over here faster. So that's all chaining together really nicely. You can see here, I'm up to 20 production in my capital, which is exactly where we want to be. And eventually we want to get to seven population in here to get our encampment. And then we'll start producing really powerful units out of the capital. So you can see, I've managed to get 60 turns into the game without ever building a military unit, really. I've kind of just very carefully... Uh, identified when and I, when and where I could be greedy. And because I identified I had no close neighbors, oh Jesus, Cahokia just got murdered. Um, that's unfortunate. That's four of my gold per turn uh, going away relatively soon. And you know what else that means? That means loyalty over here is going to be a bigger problem. So that changes how my settling strategy, because this city needs, needs to get settled sooner in order to resist that loyalty. The longer a city has been around, the easier time it has dealing with loyalty problems, just by virtue of the fact that it has a higher population. So I'm going to try, um, how do I get a friendship with you? Problem is she respects strong militaries and she has an army in this area. So if I forward settler, she's likely to come and get me, um, which I do not like. I should point out. There's Aya Fukul. Whoa, what am I doing here? No, 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 no. You stay there. But that's nice too, because we can move uh, and grab Alpine. So we can move through these hill terrain a little bit easier. We have a trader in here. I think I want to trade with Rio. Ah, oh, man. There is something to be said of trading with Egypt. There is construction giving me the boost towards games and recreation that I wanted. So we can get to work on that now. I'm not too worried about drama and poetry. Let's get a, just a couple. I do have a Gage plugged in. I do. Okay, excellent. And I tempted to pick up Magnus here. I could go for Victor to get, um... The extra promotion when you get a unit. I think getting Magnus might not be a terrible idea because I could establish him in Methane and then use a builder to chop out these two jungles to and then repair this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Magnus for chopping reasons. I'm going to place him in Methane. That'll give me the loyalty I need. And then I'll purchase a builder with my next stack of gold in that city. I like that plan so far. Now I want currency and apprenticeship to improve my mines and my production. I got the granary in Eye Guy. See, I'm worried about sending this trade route now that I see this thing here. But at the very least, I will improve that lumber mill, giving this city some productivity. We have really good, we have really good production in here. We're almost making 10 per turn. I could go for the pyramids. It's like not an awful thing to do. It would make my empire very efficient and it would finish off uh, drama and poetry for me. But I don't know if that's worth doing right now. Hmm. Hard choices. Hard choices right now for me. I, th I, th I think I just need like a, a couple of archers here just to kind of get a little bit of space control. So that's what I'm going to do for now. And this trader is going to have to just go asleep for a bit till I have a little bit more secure of my land. Because I've delayed building an army for a very long time. Um, honestly, longer than I should have been allowed to get away with. She wants to sell me sugar for 10 Diplo favor, otherwise four gold per turn. So if I trade her just for the sugar, she'll take four gold per turn. If I add one Diplo favor and then clear this out, she wants six gold per turn. That's wild. <laughs> That's kind of wild, actually. I'm curious, how much do you value 10 Diplo favor? So you think it's worth 82 gold. You're already broke. Can I get away with this okay I'm, I'm just gonna take a 10 diplo favor for our luxury that i don't have access to i don't have luxury problems right now but a few amenities are good wow you really chose the worst place to sit still didn't you okay so we got an archer in here let's go ahead and get the basilicoi paides uh i also need housing in here because we're only working four tiles which is far from ideal um but this is going to be some error score which is very important to me right now so let's get that on the table It'll also provide a little bit of housing, allowing the city to grow. And I really wish you hadn't chose there to go to sleep. Like, it's a very obnoxious spot for you to do that in. Let's found a city here. There's Chali Chalkadiki. I want a builder down here. Um, so I'm going to hard build that myself. And I don't mind working this tile because we will eventually get the horse tile in here. I'm going to have a little bit of a scout over here with my high pass pist at what Egypt is doing. And now that my archers are about to finish, I feel a little bit safer trading with Rio for that plus one culture and gold. And getting a nice road through my empire as well towards their capital, which will make any war easier. 
Oh, just pl please don't come and try to kill me. I really would appreciate that. I did not see that scout in the fog of war. Just don't kill my thing. Um, I'm going to take the 30 Diplo favor and then not forward settle them again. Okay, the scout went away. That's perfect. Let's send this archer to the north. Pella has finished an archer. I do want the granary in here to allow the city to continue to grow. Alternatively, I'm going to pick up a settler and send it up here to the north. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for that settler right now. Because we're, we're still a little bit behind in terms of culture and science with Brazil. If I go up here, you can see, even though we have equal numbers, there are a couple of techs ahead. So I think I want to spend a little bit more time working on infrastructure. Plus, I don't have my barracks up yet. At the very least, at the very, very, very least, I want to get this city up and maybe this city here. So it'll be at least two more settlers before we start gearing up to going to war with Brazil. Now, I think I just saw a settler in the fog of war that might actually change my plans a little bit. There's the Aztec. Okay, it's an honor to meet you. Aztecs can be a bit of a problem. This game, not so much. So depending on where the settler goes, I'm hoping he goes around here and not any like anywhere left of this mountain really screws me, I feel. Um, so I'm hoping they don't do that. Let's go ahead and pick up military training over here in Aigai. I have another archer. There's no barbarian encampments in the nearby area, is there? I might send this down to the south to help protect my territory. Now, in Aigai, this is going to be more of an economic city that supports the army rather than construct it. Although I could justify going for a, um, another encampment in here if I wanted a city that could potentially produce more units. It's not a terrible move. I could also develop the city as a long-term city with terms, things like water mills and monuments and get it really developed to be a construction powerhouse. But I kind of just need a couple of early game cities that can produce units. And this isn't a terrible place to do it out of. So, man, I'm having a, I'm having a tough time making that decision. Like the water mill would let the city grow much faster and work these really, really good tiles. And that would pay dividends. So I tell you what, I'm going to spend... I'm going to delay spending the money... I'm going to go for the water mill in here. And I think I wanted to purchase a builder over here once Magnus is done. So that should cost me about 260 gold. Okay. Definitely feel like we have our work cut out for us. Let's see here. Just no, don't settle there. Please settle somewhere else. God damn it. I didn't even get a chance to steal that settler either because I was just a little bit slow. So you want to buy some strategics. You're far enough away to where I could justify selling you some strategics. So I will do that. Ay -ay 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 um, I guess I could still justify settling here. It would be pretty good. It would get me access to that iron and these horses and this orange tile as well. So I might do something like that and it'll block off this area yeah we'll do that we'll settle to the north seems good man i'm very disappointed by that very 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 disappointed by that oh nice little archers and settlers running around out here there's military training we are of course going to come in here i don't need discipline anymore we're going to go ahead and plug in the veterancy card so we can build encampments faster still producing settlers so i'm pretty happy with this layout um, I might go ahead and plug in Maneuver here because I want to build some of those Heteroids. They seem pretty good. I could very easily push into Brazil with like three of those if I could get them. Uh, let's see. Next up, Feudalism is a good one to pick up because it allows me to sort of chain into mid-game units in terms of Feudal Contract. And then that also leads to Mercenaries. So we're going to push up this northern half of the Civic Tree. I have three Envoys under my wing. Hmm. I don't want to take Suzerainty of Buenos Aires because it looks like Egypt was sending units up there to take them over. But having extra amenities from bonus resources might not be a terrible thing. I feel like Nagazagarmu is like a pretty good steal here, as is Buenos Aires. So I could put three into Nagazagarmu. I could put one into Buenos Aires and two into Brussels. I definitely feel like one into Buenos Aires is actually totally fine, regardless of if they're going to get killed here by the Mariani Chariot Archers. They have a relatively large army. 
and uh, I still have two envoys to play around with. I don't know if I'm going to give those to Brazil, but I definitely will put one into the Gazagarmu to get the plus two when building units with a city with a barracks, because I am producing barracks soon. Oh, no wonder they're having trouble. There's a bunch of catapults over here. In fact, they're about to lose their capital. Jesus Christ. Brazil, what are you doing? Oh my God. I, didn't even, I wasn't even looking there. Brazil's getting murdered. There's a thumbnail worthy thing. I'll, uh, I'll call that the end of the episode, though. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.